Please listen carefully. Every every single person I've been like, oh, I'm rewatching Vampire Diaries. They're like, oh my god, I should do that. I think we need to do a season one it, and two. Can, can, can we do this for me? Oh, <laughs> please, yes, please, 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 please. Listen, I'm here I'll to do, talk about it. season two. Just because I'll I know you. Because it's something to watch. St- Damon, your favorite. Because the the only the only good person in this whole fucking show he is he's the which only, ironic anyway I know this is Vampire Diaries episode we, conversation friends we can't talk about it here Ugh. it's like spoiling your your meal before you've actually had it right. <laughs> What's up, sisters? Welcome back to another episode of Everyone and Their Sister. My name is Christina. I'm Natasha. I'm Stephanie. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, pop culture conspiracy theories. This is our pop culture conspiracy hour. Uh, But before we get into it a little bit, I feel like, you know what? We haven't checked in for a while. I miss these hoes, okay? I only see them when we record this podcast because I don't know if anybody knows this. Outside of this podcast, we're mortal enemies, We do not speak. We have nothing in common. Uh, So I feel like I never get to talk to them. I don't even know you. (laughs) We certainly don't spend every waking minute of the day on Instagram messaging each other. So I just want to check in. How how are your weeks going, guys? How are you holding up? I mean... Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. So a little update. Even though I know we don't have to talk about, like pop culture shit all the time but i have been reading one last stop recently um and it's completely changing my life right now oh i'm very much enjoying it i'm here okay so this is the thing this is the only joy i get now these days because i can't feel anything because everything is meaningless and everything is monotonous this is for you aurora (laughs) and um one last stop i hope she listens still she hasn't told me (laughs) Well, we're going to tag her this time. Um, but, like, One Last Stop is, like, one of those stories where, like, uh, like the sexuality isn't really the plot point, And I am a living for it. It, like, gives me joy that you could just have a regular story and everything else is just, like, it's just part of the story. Like, it's not, like, it's not the plot point. Like, I hate, I hate that. It's just normal. It's treated as normal. I love it. Guys, One Last Stop. Loving it right now. Who is it? Uh, who's it by? Uh, Casey McQuiston. Oh, that one. Oh, my God. Yes, I have the, yeah. the neck alley for that. I have to read it. I'm enjoying it. I'm really living it, as you can tell. So I'm in a good place right now. How about you, Steph? Are you reading or watching anything? Can I talk about the fact that we interviewed Talia Hibbert for Work Podcast? I think you should. Absolutely. She was lovely. She was great. She's excited for Bridgerton series. So I was hopped on that like, oh, my God, me too. <laughs> Let's be friends. Let's be the best of friends. Um, yeah. Good things to say about her. Can't say anything. She was lovely. That episode, guys, if you're interested, releases next week. <laughs> don't push your other podcast onto this podcast. We don't we're not talking about that podcast, okay? Before we before we ask how um Christina's doing, I just wanna point out that she has a band-aid on her neck. Leave me alone. Uh, that's so true. I, first I thought it was a shadow, and I'm like, what happened there? I just I she knew as soon as I asked when I first logged on that i was gonna associate this with a vampire bite immediately have you been watching you've been clearly you've been watching too much vampire i don't know (laughs) what you're referring to guys vampires aren't real and you really need to stop acting like it's true maybe i've met someone maybe they're slightly older okay we don't need to talk about it it's fine (laughs) did you let them into your house did you invite them in i live in an apartment i don't know how it works (laughs) I, we can get this, we can get into this more in the upcoming spoiler alert Vampire Diaries episode that we will be releasing in a little bit. I think the week after this one comes out, but I, I find the difference between like some vampire bites being just like the two little cutesy little dots, two little, oh, just the flings got in there versus the like, no, it's the whole fucking mouth, bottom teeth chomped in i appreciate the commitment in the second style so how was your week i mean like it's fine i spent the whole week watching vampire (laughs) diaries uh in anticipation of this episode what did i say uh yeah and i mean like i got this one the next episode for the next episode uh and then apparently now maybe i have to watch season two as well so we'll go from that i i haven't really been leaving my house a lot you know i haven't seen the sun in a while Mm -hmm. it's fine 
I may be feeling a little bit anemic for some reason. You might think that I look pale. It's just the makeup. It's confusing you. Don't worry about it. Well, now that we're all caught up, let's get back into our pop culture conspiracy hour friends. So the theme of this week's episode is talking all about our favorite or most interesting or most worth talking about weird pop culture conspiracies. Uh, we, this was requested, right? Like that's why we did this. Someone was like, oh, you should talk about conspiracy theories. And we're I think like- I it was on a thread, maybe Marina. Yeah, somebody did. So whoever, whoever requested it, here you go. We're very easy. All you really need to do is ask for things and we'll say yes, because that's an idea we don't have to come up with. And I appreciate it. So let's get rolling. Stephanie, what's your pop culture conspiracy theory? Uh, so this theory is an, the newest celebrity conspiracy theory that was brought to my attention. And this this specific theory goes out to Elizabeth, longtime new listener, for bringing it to my attention because I didn't know anything about this. Um, so my conspiracy theory is Kaler. And if you don't know what the fuck Kaler is, it is the fact that people believe Taylor Swift and Carly Kloss we're dating for probably four years. Um, and the, the only reason I started uh, looking into this is after she released her latest album, Folklore. And there's a song called Betty about she's pining. It's unclear who is who. So you're like, she could be into this guy. She could be into this girl. We don't know. It's like friendship. She has a boyfriend, but she wants to be with a friend. This is my personal interpretation. Just FYI. Allegedly, this is what I think. Shout out to YouTube drama channels. Um, I just want to say off the bat, I'm pissed that no one has made a Wikipedia article about this summarizing, summarizing the timeline. I had to go find it myself and I'm pissed about it. Uh, so, no, so number one, the, the, the like linchpin, the key evidence of this theory is a photo of Taylor and Carly at the 1975 concert in December 4th, 2014, where it looks like they're making out. And then that photo exploded into tumblers that are now deactivated, sadly, about people being like, no, no, they're together. I believe it. I believe it 110%. And then the evidence is as follows. Handholding. Gazing into each other's eyes. Hip rubbing. Going to each other's houses for dinner by themselves, uh, which is implied like multiple times. Pap shots of them constantly going in and out of each other's house. Going to the gym together. Boob glances. People have literally made gifts of them looking at each other's boobs, which, like, as a woman, I like to check out my friend's outfits. Like, what do you, like, how's it looking? How are the girls looking at, uh, for this time? They did a best friend video for Vogue, and, like, the gifts from that were incredible. Just, like, constant staring into each other's eyes. <clears throat> it was intense. They also did the Victoria's Secret fashion show, I just want to know, before that photo at the concert came out. So many gifts of that. Them looking at each other while... Well, Carly's walking down the runway, her running up to her while um, they're leaving the set. Another big thing is they went to a base baseball, basketball game and someone lip read what she was saying because uh, Carly like to Taylor, like, relax, relax. And then Taylor's like, I'm going to try. People thought they were together through that. Uh, she's in her bad blood music video. But I, so like that, wait, those are the facts. Wait, yes. what was she going to try? <laughs> Try what? Try to relax. Like you just no, try to oh, relax. Try to okay. Because I, I guess basketball exciting. games are are scary when you're front and center getting pap shot. Pap shot? That sounds wrong. <laughs> it truly does. Like a pap smear, but like <laughs> yeah, yeah. a shot in your back. What a sh- yeah. Okay. Uh, getting their photo taken, but while being courtside because you know I, I've been to a basketball game. Correction. Never. Um. So I just want to point out during this time. Um. <laughs> Carly was dating Jared Kushner. They were engaged in 2018. Ugh. They married in October 2018 and then later had a bigger wedding in June 2019. <gasps> Taylor Swift dated Calvin Harris during this time. And then I have a little, yeah. remember when I said the 1975? That comes back later. So remember that. So here's, 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 here's why I think something is weird. Taylor did not go to either of her weddings and they were good friends. That's suspicious to me. And then literally, they had to write an article about it. Kloss's reps clarified uh, that Swift did not attend because the Kloss had a fallout. No. So, the, okay. There's, there's a long paragraph. I have to read it. <laughs> okay. 
Klaus's second wedding was this weekend of June 20th to 23rd. Swift was silent on social media around that time. She had just released her You Need to Calm Down music video, but Swift had been working behind the scenes to prepare for the launch of the next album, Lover, on August 23rd. For example, she revealed in the last Instagram Live on July 23rd that she was shooting a music video. Then, so much of her work has been done in secret. So she was busy with a music video, which her friend wouldn't have told her that, hey, I'm planning to get married in June. Can you, like, make it? Weird. Klaus's rep clarification helps debunk rumors that Swift did not attend because she and Klaus had a fallout or because Klaus purchased or because Klaus's manager Scooter Braun who bought Swift's masters and provoked her to write an open letter about how upset she was about the purchase because of the incessant manipulative bullying of her was both occasions they either had a friendship fallout or they had a breakup and like why would you go to your (laughs) ex-girlfriend's wedding but the fact that Carly Klaus manager Scooter Braun I didn't know that and like Scooter Braun's a bit of an asshole specifically in regards to Taylor Swift's music is interesting and I don't think they ever got over that. So you think even if they weren't in a relationship or even if they were, Carly Kloss chose Scooter Braun, her manager, over Taylor Swift, her best friend and or secret lover? Correct. Okay. I'm on, I'm on board. Um, But recent updates. Uh, as we know, I have told you guys to follow the Demo Instagram. Don't know if you have, but it was recently brought to my attention that Taylor Swift secretly dated the lead singer of the 1975 which explains to me why she was at that concert and the timelines match up in that way but could she be doing could she be dealing on both sides probably who knows all the best to you Kaylor. oh i also like to point out this is my work cited because like i'm an english major if you didn't know and these are my work side i'd like to credit them so you have you have the bizarre the vice article the bizarre taylor swift conspiracy theory that she's secretly gay by zan romanoff and then you have a literal website. Someone bought a Squarespace, KaylorEvidence.com, taken from her Tumblr and put on a website. Uh, and it's still running to this day. And that's been around probably since Tumblr died, which was what, 2016, 2017? Someone is obsessed with this theory. And I love every single second of it. So yeah, this is my interpretation. The, the, new, the new leads lead me in one direction, but like the friendship didn't end. Could they have made out while they were friends? Maybe. Who's to say? Who's to say? So that is my conspiracy theory. Oh, I should also mention there's a lot of photos of them at restaurants together, which is not weird because you're friends. You go to restaurants together, but like secretly she's like, they're like, hey, Carly moved in front of Taylor so the paparazzi couldn't see her. What a what a lovely person to do that, to defend her lover. And I was like, okay, relax. Oh my God. <laughs> but also I'm like, could be true. I think my favorite thing is how overwhelmed you are by this theory. <laughs> me it really like yeah you got like a little, am i like, overwhelmed you got a little like flustered while going through it and I, I enjoyed it i felt like you truly like you're invested in it in a way that i really appreciate as i as i mentioned no one gave me a nice compact article to read i had to go scroll through pages and pages of evidence <laughs> of just, what people believe is evidence <laughs> i'm picturing steph like the dude from it's always sunny or whatever doing the like the, the the hand motions in front of the murder yeah, board yeah. conspiracy board that's me I mean, the timeline is very, very fascinating. Uh, I mean, I'll believe anything. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, maybe don't say that to the cult leaders listening to this podcast. We do know that you and Nat, you in particular, very at risk of becoming in a cult. And then Nat Nat heard that, like, understood that we felt that you would be, of the three of us, the most likely to fall into a cult. And Nat was like, challenge accepted. And then started researching that fucking online cult of, like, they think they're (laughs) aliens or, I forget what they think they are. Soul-bound aliens or whatever. And then we're like, Nat, don't buy their fucking products. (laughs) And then the, the... The founder, like, retweeted something that I posted about their robes. Yeah. Guys, bless. So I'm scared for both of you, so we don't need to put that energy out there, okay? I mean, you get me at a bad time, like, for sure I'd be in a cult. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I believe it. Don't worry, we will we will pull you out if I don't get also stuck. <laughs> That's the thing, it's gonna be like this chain, like, Steph will go in, and then Nat will enter to pull her out, but then Nat will also get stuck, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll just wash my hands of the both of you. 
I saw how difficult it was, okay, in the vow for them to get those people out. I'm not pulling that through. My my mother's cousin isn't Prince Charles, okay? I don't have the connections needed to pull people out of a cult. I simply will not do it. <laughs> I have one last thing to say about this theory though. And it's that if my best friend was marrying a Kushner, I also would not attend that wedding. But he's he's the only good Kushner. Um, good is still a very, very uh, generous word perhaps. Carly Kloss, like you seem fun. You have a YouTube channel. We could be friends. <laughs> that's that's the audience that we're hoping to get to this episode. Uh, Jason Momoa and Carly Kloss. Just again, it's an FYI. <laughs> reach for the reach for the stars. <laughs> okay, Nat, your choice, your pick. All right, guys, uh, buckle up because <laughs> this one is going to be a bit of a doozy. Um, it's a uh, I mean, like, if anybody has ever spoken to me for even five minutes, they know that my actual favorite celeb conspiracy theory is, of course, Lady Gaga, who Mr. Ripley'd her way into her BFF's life and stole her budding music career. But I thought I thought your favorite was Solange is Beyonce's daughter. Oh, also a great one. But that one holds zero weight, so I can't even do a whole thing on it. <laughs> oh, but the one you're about to talk about holds weight. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yes. Yeah. Wait until you hear about the less depressing conspiracy theory I'm going to bring into this. Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer. Of course. <laughs> And really, it's only fitting that the Zodiac Killer's identity was truly revealed because he couldn't even help himself. He just had to tweet it out. He had to tweet out that little code. So really, that that's my little my little teaser. I'm just gonna I'm gonna like set the stage for you guys in case you don't know about Ted Cruz or the Zodiac Killer because I think you need just a little basic understanding. This is for our true crime listeners, truly. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You, see, I, I'm catering to a certain crowd. We're pandering. Yes, we're pandering. What do you mean? If the murder people are obviously... on to the Kaler conspiracy theory? That's a lie. <laughs> I mean, if it gets a little bit darker, maybe. She's going to murder the Kushners. And it was Taylor Swift who did it. I would support that. So, <laughs> right off the bat, Zodiac, if you don't already know, infamous pseudonym given to the serial killer who operated in Northern California during the 60s and 70s. He tended to target young couples, and I believe at some point during that killing spree, if you've listened to My Favorite Murder, they talk about this, um, he targeted, a, I think it was like a huge craze that people thought he was targeting women with ponytails or something like that. It was like a weird thing. And so like, of course, Northern California went, actually all of Cal California went really crazy. And like, people were like, oh, I can't do this hairstyle. I'm going to be like shot by the Zodiac killer. It was a whole thing. It was a really dark time. But basically what happened after every single killing, he actually wrote really angry letters to the police, uh, often aiming his anger at women and children. And a lot of them included encoded messages. That's the basic bare bones. He was never caught. There was a film with Jake Gyllenhaal. If you want to find out more and you don't want to read about the Zodiac Killer, it's it's a historical film. It's a piece that you should be watching, truly. And that's all I'm going to say about Zodiac Killer in that sense, historically. But then there comes Ted Cruz. He's a Texas senator. He's making the lives of women and their bodies miserable. He's a terrible human being, ex-presidential candidate from 2016, etc. Born after the Zodiac murders? You'd think so, wouldn't you? But we're going to get into why people think he wasn't and that he is, in fact, the Zodiac Killer. It was super hard to pinpoint where this originated because this theory has actually been knocking around since 2013, if you can believe it. So... so three years before he actually became a presidential candidate. And it stemmed from, as far as people know, he did a speech where he said something in response to John Cain, um, RIP, um, and a viewer tweeted out specifically, alert, Ted Cruz is speaking. His speech is titled, this is the Zodiac speaking. And I think it's because he's like, this is Ted Cruz speaking, whatever. So this person was clearly mocking him. It was a troll commentary. Um, and from that, things kind of snowballed very slowly on Twitter. So the origins of this are Twitter. A year later, after that one tweet, and I guess there was some conversation around that one tweet, Ted Cruz made a comment somewhere online or like on a speech or something that net neutrality was a threat to the internet or it's Obamacare for the internet, oh. a viewer tweeted out, Ted Cruz's deathbed confession, I am the Zodiac killer, hashtag Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer. And again, 
very very sly comments started trickling in for that one tweet like barely 300 to 2000 comments it wasn't like it wasn't viral but it was a popular tweet ish and then from there even more tweets started to come out where people were like oh i'm just gonna keep providing evidence at this point it just year by year the tweets started to grow until of course 2016 when an activist named tim faust love this dude started selling t-shirts that said ted cruz is the zodiac killer and i just want you to note that the the funds for those t-shirts went to women in el paso to get safe abortions they raised thirty thousand dollars from those t-shirts which is fantastic and i think when he was interviewed by somebody he said it seemed like a plausible theory at the time (laughs) Which love, love Tim Faust and his dedication to the women in El Paso. So, of course, this is like around the time that Ted Cruz starts running for uh, his like presidential campaign or whatever. And around the same time, those t-shirts are selling, other tweets are happening. And of course, at the same time, a birther conspiracy begins. (laughs) about him about his own birth certificate saying that he was born so people were saying oh he can't be the zodiac killer because he was born after all the killings or whatever and somebody was like well if obama faked his birth certificate of course ted cruz could fake his and related to that somebody was like oh it says here that and then all this stuff happened that like oh ted cruz is born in canada how can somebody who's canadian run for president and at the same time somebody's like oh he was born in calgary alberta canada did you know that the zodiac's first victims were cal and gary (laughs) and it was (laughs) Guys, the things that people were pulling, pulling and pulling, like somebody was like, oh, look at his logo for his presidential campaign, which just said Ted Cruz 2016. And you think perfectly normal. Somebody rearranged the letters and the numbers, made them all topsy-turvy to fit into a narrative that just said true Zodiac. And I have never been more pleased in my life to see a logo. I love the logo. I know. It was great. And then you keep seeing these tweets throughout 2016. This is still early 2016, by the way. People are like putting, they're pulling the T from Ted and putting it in the C from Cruz because the Zodiac Killer symbol was like a circle with a cross through it. So, of course, the T in the C looks like that, (laughs) the cross in the circle. Somebody's like, oh, Theodore Cruz, 12 letters. Zodiac Killer, 12 letters. 12 signs of the zodiac it's almost too perfect so of course people are saying oh ted cruz isn't really his real name this is all a nod to his true identity the zodiac killer (laughs) ted cruz is the zodiac killer and so at the same time again a police sketch resurfaced and they were like well prove me wrong now ted cruz looks the same as the zodiac killer same age even (laughs) He's an immortal Zodiac killer. And the image actually looks very similar to him when you put it side by side. And I, and my theory is it's only because all white guys really look the same. Truly. Also because Ted Cruz um, is a Zodiac killer. <laughs> truly. And of course, at its peak, at its peak, this theory in 2016, a company called, I guess, Public Policy Polling did a poll of Florida voters. 38% of Florida voters believed that Ted Cruz could be the Zodiac Killer. 10% of those pollers were absolutely sure. <laughs> and like, the only thing I can conclude from this is not that unexpected from Florida. Yeah, I know. Like, that like, yeah, that sounds like, right. <laughs> that doesn't even sound like they were trolling. <laughs> And so, like, to add, like, add more fuel to the flames, of course, Daily Dot came out with an article in 2016. This is still early 2016, guys, at its peak, claiming that Ted Cruz had never denied the allegations that he was the Zodiac Killer. And I'm laughing so hard. Guys, it's truly gem. Someone literally can't contain themselves. Imagine, imagine you're running for president, and the scandal that you have to deal with is that people think that you're a killer from like ten, five years before you were born. Allegedly born, we don't know. Ten percent of voters in Florida believe that he was absolutely so, like, believe these people in Florida more easily believe that Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer than they believe in the coronavirus. (laughs) It's very true. Oh, man. 
if you're thinking that, oh, there's no way anybody in political office has any inkling of what's happening, you'd be incorrect because Senator Lindsey Graham, or as we like to call him, Lady G, said at one public dinner, if you kill Ted Cruz on the floor of the Senate and the trial is at the Senate, no one will convict you, indicating that no one actually likes Ted Cruz. And so somebody took that and like create made it like a whole thing um, about how Ted Cruz was definitely a serial killer. This is just proving that he's a serial killer because nobody actually likes him. He's a loner with his colleagues. And of course, it was like a nod to all of that. He is truly just trash. And then a Twitter user used a photo a photoshopped um a republican debate where it included like the i think it was the sign one that you were talking about yeah. christina earlier is ted cruz the zodiac killer they photoshopped it it became a huge thing shot up they did it in like the interactive ticker at the bottom of one of the debates as well it was like a huge guys that month that month that that happened is ted cruz the zodiac killer was the second highest suggestion in google's autocomplete for is ted <laughs> Second highest, but of course, Google removed it or censored it or something like that. And there was like a whole like conspiracy around that. So already things that are happening around this have reached higher, higher regions than you could even imagine. And of course, Ted Cruz never responded to himself. But when I said that, if you don't think other people were around him knew about it, his own wife, Heidi Cruz, that same year <laughs> responded to a reporter that outright questioned her. She responded to it saying that she has been married to him for 15 years and I know pretty well who he is, so it doesn't bother me at all. There's a lot of garbage out there. So you're telling me that she's happy to be married to the Zodiac Killer? <laughs> yeah. So like the wording was so bizarre to me that I was like, what do you mean it doesn't bother her at all? <laughs> like it doesn't bother her that he's the Zodiac Killer? Like obviously she Sorry, she's like, excuse me, I don't actually wear my hair in a ponytail, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm not bothered. <laughs> so in the beginning, I teased that, of course, the Zodiac Killer would expose himself. And it was because at, at the end of the peak of this meme that was happening online, this conspiracy theory that the world had taken up and infected in every region, <laughs> um, Cruz himself alluded to that meme by tweeting one of the Zodiac Killer's cryptograms that he used to like send in to the police or I think a newspaper or something like that. But one of those cryptograms, he tweeted it himself. It was, this is like 2017, so post-election. And he responded to a retweet from Senator Ben Sass, who referred to Cruz as the son of the guy who killed Kennedy as a joke. <laughs> yeah, Woof. as a freaking joke. And he was like, yeah, okay, happy Halloween. Here's my cryptogram. And he did it again. So, like, he jokes about the meme, still hasn't denied the allegations. <laughs> Important to note. But in but after that, it pretty much petered out. Once he, like, actually took up the meme himself, it, like, kind of petered out. It's still sprinkled in. He ruined it. He truly did, as many politicians do. So, at that point, it petered out. There's still sprinklings here and there on Twitter. People make jokes. Anytime Ted Cruz says anything, there's a referral to it. There's even actually a current theory that he grew out his beard to look less like Zodiac, even though famously politicians tend to be clean shaven. And it's true. He's probably one of the only politicians with a beard. <laughs> he really just doesn't want to look like that sketch. So, really, the question here is Nat, nah, is Ted the Zodiac killer? The answer is obviously no, <laughs> but no, yes. But here is my angle. The Zodiac Killer conspiracy theory is a form of activism against his policies and a form of trolling him, which infected his entire life. What is Ted Cruz known for? He's the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> it's fucked up his entire life. And I appreciate this kind of activism. So is Ted Cruz the Zodiac Killer? We're going to say yes. Yeah, exactly. You, you I believe yes. it. Yeah. Thoughts, concerns. <laughs> I mean, everything you went through out. a lot there. Yeah, there's a lot of information. That was fi that was 15 minutes of backstory. I mean, it was necessary backstory. I have to set the stage. Yeah, Ted no, Cruz it's is a true. terrible person. He hates women. He clearly probably also hates. He doesn't like anything about socialist agendas. I'm using air quotes there. 
I'm truly laughing at the idea of the two interns that run the social media for both Lindsey Graham or whoever, and also Ted Cruz sitting there being like, I have a really funny joke. They're like tweeting each other because they both went to the same fucking all white university. They were in the same frat. And and the guy that interns for Lindsey Graham is like, I know I'm going to tweet out this. And the intern for Ted Cruz is like, I'm going to link to a fucking letter <laughs> from the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> It'll be great. It's going to go viral. And that just these two white dudes having that laugh. And then one of them goes on and I'm sure he ends up working at social media for Wendy's or something. <laughs> I mean, Wendy's social media is excellent. I are, I would argue that linking to the article for the Zodiac Killer in that tweet was also excellent. Is Ted Cruz the one that also got flagged for like liking porn tweets on his person on his like professional Twitter? I mean, that sounds about right. It was one yeah, of let them. Let me do some real time... Oh, no, no, that's him. Ted Cruz count likes por- pornographic tweet. I mean, that checks out, too. What a Zodiac thing to do. Truly. His burner account wasn't on. He wasn't paying attention. He's... Oh, shit. Ted Cruz is I mean, a like, killer. And he can never forget that. The brilliance. The brilliance in the in the making of this, this celebrity conspiracy theory. The internet is just a beautiful gift to all of us. And this is one of the examples. Yeah, every so often it really tries to make up for its own shittiness. And it's like, I know, Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer. And I really appreciate one of the things you're talking about of, like, the way that this is a form of activism. Like, I do kind of like the idea of, like, you know, people who are dumb, people who believe a lot of conspiracy theories. How do we use that to our advantage against someone who likely gets votes from people who listen to a lot of conspiracy theories? And it was like, I know, Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer. Like, it was like, happened so organically, but what people turned it into. Mm -hmm. I like that this conspiracy led to a donation to, I assume, like, Planned Parenthood. And I appreciate that all that can come from. And, like, there's no way this man would have ever even had a chance of getting elected because he's a Zodiac killer. Exactly. Exactly. It ruined his entire... I don't even know what him and his wife talk about now. Probably about how he's a Zodiac killer and she's fine with it. Like, do they discuss his 37 victims from the 60s and 70s? What do they talk about? Maybe she's a Zodiac killer. Oh, and he won't deny it. He's like, he's like, no, I'll keep the heat on me. I'll keep the heat on me and that way you'll be safe. I just picture them really like, you know, the cruises are sitting down for dinner in their stately home in Texas, wherever the fuck they live. I don't care. Um, they're, they're chilling. They're getting ready to plow into some very boring white bland food. Uh, and they sit there and she just, she looks over at him and she goes, you know, sometimes I do consider putting my hair in a ponytail. I, I think that maybe I'd like to. And he just looks at her and he goes, that's a decision that you need to make. That's a, that's the one bodily choice he'll allow her to have. Because if she does put in a ponytail, he'll have a new victim. And it's just a very interesting dynamic to picture, I think. So I, I like that. I appreciate it. Chilling. 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 Heidi Cruz, I'm looking at you. <laughs> so after that uh, very lighthearted topic, Christina... What is your celebrity conspiracy theory? All right. I won't build a whole crafting thing here, but I'd like to go into and what I'd like to inform people before I talk about this is that I've decided for my quality of life, for me to have a good life, I've chosen to believe that this is true. I'm going to walk around for the rest of my life as though this fact is correct. And if it ever for any reason comes up, I'm going to say with the utmost of confidence and with no irony in my voice, this is the thing that I believe because I truly think that I will be a better person with a funnier life if I choose to do that. So I'd like to talk about the conspiracy theory that <laughs> John Benet Ramsey, in fact, did not die, but instead changed her name to Katy Perry and is now global pop sensation Katy Perry is actually the original Jean Benet Ramsey who was never murdered in the first place. And you might be thinking, well, where the fuck did that come from? And what a great question. None of the original videos that talked about this, that initially put this theory out into the world, even exist anymore. The only ones that exist are other people commenting on the original ones that put this together. But here's a selection of some of the evidence people have used to talk about how uh, Katy Perry is actually just Jean Benet Ramsey. Uh, in her music video for Wide Awake, 
Katy Perry sings the, the line, the single line. Yeah, I am born again out of the lion's den. I don't have to pretend. I am born again. That's, that's one full piece of evidence. In that video, there's a young girl who is suggested to be the young Katy Perry, or as we know her now, actually Jean Benet Ramsey. Uh, and, and Katy Perry says goodbye to her as the young girl rides off of, on a bicycle in the distance with a license plate that says Catherine to sort of suggest, hey, tiny Jean Benet Ramsey, it's time for you to let your old life go and get on this bike that says Catherine so you can be Katy Perry now. She also, there's a single butterfly in this music video, and I don't know if you know this, butterflies, they symbolize rebirth. Okay, and this is not the only time that Katy Perry has used the very niche, very rarely touched upon topic of rebirth in her videos, as she has twice now used the image of a phoenix to sort of suggest like I have been reborn from Jean Benet Ramsey into Katy Perry. Now, perhaps you're telling me that's surely not enough evidence. That's nothing. It's meaningless. And to that I say, why do you need to bring these facts into this? That's not what we're here to discuss, okay? Because I have more information for you. At one point, Katy Perry was giving an interview <laughs> to a magazine and they were asking about her past and her life and her childhood. And for some reason, Katy Perry chose to say, oh, I was never really someone that wanted to be like a child star or a pageant queen. There is no Jean Benet Ramsey in me waiting to burst out. And as the person from this YouTube video rightly points out, what a weird thing to say about a very tragic event, Katy Perry. What an odd point of reference for you to use. But perhaps for Katy Perry, it's not that odd and it's not that tragic because in fact, on that day, she did not die. She was reborn into herself. So maybe it's a situation where only Katy Perry is allowed to make this reference and no one else is because we are not Jean Benet Ramsey. She is. Now, you might be saying there's there needs to be more. And trust me, there is. Is it a lot more? No, but there's more, okay? Because... Katy, ha Katy Perry now has black hair. But as this YouTube video talking about this conspiracy chose to point out, Katy Perry actually had much lighter hair when she was a child. And this YouTube video shows that evidence to you that like, hey, you know how Jean Benet Ramsey was blonde? Well, here's a picture of Katy Perry as a blonde with low lights and dark brown roots. And why, might you ask, would they go through all the trouble of um, making sure that she had dark brown roots and low lights? Well, this conspiracy theory does not address that because it was made by a man and he doesn't understand how hair works. But I am going to, for him, provide a little evidence. Since obviously this is a ploy by the Illuminati uh, to create a new star from the ashes of Jean Benet Ramsey, of course they knew that people might eventually figure this out. And so Katy Perry from the age of 12 through now in her life to suddenly suggest like, no, she's not a real blonde. They in fact only dyed the roots of her hair slightly brown. So you would think she was a bottle dye, but truly she's actually a blonde with just the dyed roots. So there you go. You've got that fact, okay? She's been covering up the hair for years now. She only just finally went blonde a short while ago. And honestly, it was like, Katie, you're being too obvious now. It's almost like she wants to be caught. Uh, some other, you know, core pieces of things to address, like, oh, how is this connected? Uh, many of Jean Benet Ramsey's and Katy Perry's outfits are in fact similar. Because one time, Jean Benet Ramsey wore a white cowboy hat with pink rhinestones on it. And then another time, Katy Perry, technically years earlier, because she is actually six years older than Jean Benet Ramsey would have been, wore a pink hat with a black uh, little like brim around it. And those two things are the same. They both wore white and black checkerboard outfits. And as I learned literally today, the white and black checkerboard is a symbol for the Illuminati. And if you look at John, if you look at the Ramsey's household, you'll find that their kitchen also has white and black checkered tiles. Okay. 
Have you ever seen a kitchen in your entire life with white and black checkered tiles? No, you haven't. And if you have, I'm sorry to tell you, those people, they're also in the Illuminati. You need to be aware of that now. That's a real thing, okay? And finally, what I'd like to come down to is the fact that Katy Perry's parents look eerily similar to Jean Benet's Ramsey's parents if Jean Benet Ramsey's father got bald, mother got skinny, and both of them had extensive plastic surgery. Then they look like fucking twins, guys. Okay? Whoa. Katy Perry's brother also maybe kind of look like Jean Benet Ramsey's brother, who would not technically be a murderer in this case because Jean Benet Ramsey is not actually dead. Uh, there's no explanation given for how these three people would be living a double life because, as to the best of our knowledge, the Ramsey family is all still alive and Katy Perry's family is all still alive. But here's where I'd come back to you again and say, you know what? You're asking too many questions. I need you to put the questions back in your mouth. Stop it. Don't think about it. Okay? The mom's dead. The JonBenet's mom's dead. So technically, she's living Katy Perry's mom's oh, life right now. You know what? There you go. She was like, oh, being Katy Perry's mom is taking up too much time. I can't be both anymore. It's time for the other Ramsey to die. So here we go. It's all connecting. I'm sure if you went back, we'd find that we saw more of Katy Perry's mother since that day happened because she had more time to dedicate. There is so much more listed in this conspiracy theory, but perhaps my favorite additional and, and final note here is that you might be thinking, well, if Katy Perry was born in 1984, and JonBenet Ramsey was born in 1990, that would mean that there is in fact a six year difference between them. And that when JonBenet Ramsey died at the age of six, Katy Perry would have been 12. So how do they, how'd they pull this off? And virtually verbatim from the source material this is from, they very easily pulled this off because you see, in fact, Katy Perry was 12. So they didn't have to hide her because no one would confuse a 12 year old for a six year old. So she didn't have to go into hiding. She very clearly couldn't have been Jean Benet Ramsey because she was 12. And that's proof that she is indeed Jean Benet Ramsey. What? Yep. <laughs> Great logic. There. I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with that because that is, once again, virtually word for word from the video. They throw in one last final like, oop, where Katy Perry was born on October 25th. Jean Benet died on December 25th. Is that another little nod to the day of her rebirth? Sure, why wouldn't you just pick the same fucking month and day of a year? I don't know. I'm not Jean Benet Ramsey nor Katy Perry because they are one person and neither of those people is me. So I cannot speak to it. But I am choosing to live in a world where you do not confuse a 12 year old for a six year old. And thus that means that Jean Benet Ramsey must now be Katy Perry. She did not die. What? Those police officers pulled out of that house the night they went to investigate and found the previous Jean Benet Ramsey dead? I, who's to say? Perhaps it was a pile of hams and a trench coat made to look like a small child. I, I couldn't tell you. I certainly couldn't. Only Katy Perry could let you know because she is, in fact, Jean Benet Ramsey. Damn. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to say about this. You really covered a lot. It's very believable, I think. Um, I would also like to choose to believe that Jean Benet Ramsey did not dry, die tragically. And as, in fact, just Katy Perry live in the life John Bene Ramsey would have anyway and did this completely pointless rebirth for no reason <laughs> because did Katy Perry benefit from John Bene Ramsey's death in any way to boost her career? No. Well, you see now, uh, John Bene Ramsey had to be sacrificed in order for Katy Perry to become famous. Um, how that happens, I don't know. John Bene Ramsey already arguably had some name recognition and some famousness at the time uh, by way of uh, child pageant queens. But they said, no, no, we are going to start from scratch with a 12 year old Katy Perry. Do you think like John Benet Ramsey's um, agent was just like, oh, no, we can't have her going out into the world with that name. We need to start over. Rebrand. And, and her parents were like, her parents were like, start over. We can do that. We can pull that off. And they like literally started over. Yeah. I think I'm, so as well. I have my own conspiracy theory I'd like to put through right now related to these topics. 
Uh, so the real reason that Taylor Swift and Katy Perry were in a feud was because Taylor Swift knew that Katy Perry was John Benet Ramsey, and Katy Perry knew that Taylor Swift and Carly Kloss were dating, so they couldn't. They just butted heads. So that is why that was feud existed. Yeah, mutually assured destruction. That's why they've never publicly really addressed. They're all like, "Oh, it's because of backup dancers," but really, it's because they both no. know imploding things about each other's curse. I love it. I also have to say mm -hmm. the reason I've chosen to believe this is true is because a lot of conspiracy theories I find, except for this one, this is airtight, woof, beautiful, nothing. You can't poke a hole in a single <laughs> one of this logic. It's just excellent. But one of the reasons I've chosen to believe it's true is that like, I understand where most conspiracy theories come from. Like I get how Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer. They're both evil. What a simple connection to make. I understand how you get to the conspiracy theory of like, oh, they're secretly dating. Taylor Swift gives massive uh, sapphic vibes off. Like she just does. It's honestly weird she dated so many men. It seems like overcompensating. A lot, the whole Solange is actually Beyonce's daughter. It's like racism. I get it. You know, like all of those things fit together with how people came to that conclusion, even if that conclusion is absolutely nonsense and clearly not true. With this one, I just don't understand at all how anyone ever decided that maybe. Jean Benet Ramsey and Katy Perry kind of look alike. And so that means that they're the same person. And it's so absolutely absurd that I have to believe it's because it's the truth. Because who would come up with this as a conspiracy, as something fake? If it wasn't the truth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the originator just happened to have a John Bonet Ramsey poster up on their thing on their wall, and then they were like, I'm gonna put this Katy Perry poster up. And then they just spent hours staring to both of their doe eyes and were like, you know what's crazy? They both look the same. What if they are the same? What if, what if the person who put it out there was Taylor Swift? Okay? <gasps> because she was worried that people were catching on to the uh, Carly Kloss thing, okay? And she needed a oh. distraction and she knew something about Katy Perry Boom. and then she put it out into the world and then Katy Perry was like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. But Katy Perry decided, you know what? I'm not going to release your secret because I won't out people because all of my fans are virtually exclusively the gay community and then I would no longer be famous. And then it would be like, well, then why did I pretend to die as Jean Benet Ramsey age six years and become Katy Perry? Then that all of that would have been meaningless. And so in order to make sure it wasn't meaningless, she's still keeping Taylor's secret, even though Taylor paid off a random YouTuber who again had to take down his videos, okay? Because it was too true. It was too true. We have it. It's all connected. It's all connected. Maybe Whoa. Ted. Maybe Ted Cruz killed Jean Benet Ramsey. <gasps> I would say, yeah, that's it. We've solved the case. Yeah, she had. She had those little ponytails growing up. Oh my god! <laughs> it's it's clear. It's she connected. fits. She's from California. She fits. She fits into it. Oh, and as we know, Alberta is just above California. Right there. They're connected. They're connected. Holy <laughs> shit. We're, we're breaking open cases left and right oh here. Oh my God. <laughs> Who would have thought all three of our conspiracy theories are actually part of a bigger conspiracy theory? It Whoa. is just three muffins in a muffin tin. <laughs> the three muffins in a muffin tin. You... Listeners, you heard it here first. You heard it here exclusively. Jean Benet Ramsey is Katy Perry because a bunch of years ago, Ted Cruz killed Jean Benet Ramsey because he was so many years being inactive as the Zodiac killer. And then Taylor Swift revealed the secret to the world about Katy Perry's true identity so that no one would reveal her relationship with Carly Kloss. It's all connected. I'm sorry, Carly Kloss's new husband, Kushner? Very connected to Ted Cruz, okay? Political family ties? There we go. That's not even a leap. We've done it. We've done it. You heard it here first and here only. We are looking out for you, Heidi Cruz. We will know the truth when you show up dead one day. <laughs> Send us a signal if you're the Zodiac Killer, Heidi Cruz. Let us know. Heidi Cruz, is, if she dies, is like, no, I'm not bothered by that. The day that Heidi Cruz is ready to die, she'll just put her hair up. That's what, that will be the signal to the world. I really love where this came 
I really love where we ended up. I think that, uh, like I said, we, we're just like three very intelligent, smart people. Uh, <laughs> and I think we came to the natural conclusion of all of these different things. I, I just think that we simply did because, of course, like this is just what makes sense. And for anybody listening, if you listen just as we post this episode and then you find like a week later, you're like, oh, my God, the episode doesn't exist there anymore. You can know that we, in fact, were infiltrated by the Illuminati. They made us take the episode down. Uh, Katy Perry literally came to my house. House. you know ted cruz called up nat just be aware the signal for you to know is that we will post that image of the three muffins and a muffinton and you will know little did you guys know that our podcast isn't that popular amongst the general public on purpose because we know too much information they're like you're not gonna end up in the in any algorithm sorry no the only people that listen to you are gonna be people that you know because we're gonna make sure no one can find your podcast i can't wait for like five years down the line some YouTuber is pulling up a conspiracy theory and they do some Googling and everyone and their sister pops up and they listen to this episode and they're like, this is it. This is it. They source us. We are their source. Okay. For the Taylor, Katy Perry, JonBenet Ramsey, Ted Cruz conspiracy that we all knew about. Okay. We knew it. We've known this forever. And then one day, Lena Dunham will find out and then she'll tweet it out and then it'll all be good. Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham. She, I picked, she's Taylor Swift's friend, but I feel like they're not close enough. I don't think they're friends would, anymore. I think that Lena, here's my conspiracy theory. I think Lena Dunham would 1000% spill her friend's secrets. Oh, yeah, I believe that. She's in trust. I had to pick sure. someone that Taylor Swift knew and would betray her. And immediately my brain was like, well, Lena Dunham's a betrayer. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Layers on layers this episode. Layers on layers. So we do have to wrap this up because already the Illuminati is knocking down my door uh, to kidnap me and take me away. I Ted Cruz is in front of me giving me the wrap up signal. So it's time for us to go, sadly. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to our pop culture conspiracy hour filled with nothing but facts and nothing but the truth. You know, stay, stay, stay woke, stay open, keep your mind open, you know, be on the lookout always. Uh, and thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you stick around for some of our previous episodes. Uh, we recently did one, started from the bottom, which was just like independent uh, movies and books that came out in the past and they came out now. Uh, is there a conspiracy theory in that one as well? I don't know. You're going to have to listen and find out. Uh, but thanks so much for listening. You can catch us on uh, until our, they're taken down by the by like the people that are trying to silence us. You can find us on Instagram and on Twitter at EatsCast and on Pinterest at Everyone and Their Sister. And that's everything for me. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Bye. 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 No one can ever uh, find out that we were paid to do that.